Hi guys, it's Bridget. Welcome back to my channel. Hope you're having a beautiful day in the summery time. So today we're gonna be doing a video on disappointing makeup products that I've tried recently. Now within the last, I'd say like three months or so, some of these products have just like not hit right for me. A lot, I'd say the majority of the makeup that I try and use is really good. I mean, I feel like people pay attention to formulas these days, but every once in a while there's something that just doesn't do it for me. So that's what we're talking about today. I feel like I have mentioned several of these products, whether it was just in passing or in separate reviews of products, but I just want to lump them all together today and talk about them one last time. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Quick side note though, I do have a small business, The Open Crypt on Etsy. Our website is no longer available, but we do have Etsy products and new products as well. So if you want to check out my Etsy, I'd appreciate it. And if you give me a five star review, it would make my entire day. It really does. So thank you for any support on that. Let's get started with these disappointments. Of course, these are my own personal opinions on these things. If it worked out for you, I'm glad. I mean, nobody wants to waste their money on a product they don't like. So I'm happy for you if it worked out for you. It just wasn't my experience with these things. So firstly is something that I was actually loving when I initially tried it. I tried it on in a get ready with me video of like trying a whole face of new products and I quite enjoyed it. However, the longer I wore this product after filming, it started to oxidize on me. So this is the She Glam Skin Fluencer Balm. This is in the shade Porcelain. They have a lot of shade, like the shader is actually pretty good. Now this looks fantastic on my skin. I will say I love the way this looked on my skin. I thought it was really easy to apply. It's also easy to just take your sponge or your brush in here and get all the product off that you want. However, even though it looked really pretty, from the get-go, longer I wore it, I started noticing a lot of oxidation, especially on the lower parts of my face where I don't have much concealer on because I mostly focus my concealer under my eyes. So far, parts of my face that were mostly just foundation started to oxidize really badly. It was not, it was not it for me. So I do like it. If I'm, you know, just gonna film a video or film some TikToks or I'm just running to the store, I'd probably wear this. But if I was out all day doing errands or something, I wouldn't pick this one. I think also in that video where I was doing a full face of testing new products, I mentioned that I didn't like this. And this is the Ofra Translucent Light Airbrush Setting Powder. Now they come in three different shades as well as like a white oil control uh, shade. The light one is the one I have obviously. And uh, it's, first of all, pink. It's, it's very tinted. It's, it's a very tinted color for your light translucent powder. Translucent Light is the name of the shade. And it just it makes, it makes me look so dry. Like it makes me look so dry. My skin does not look good. It enhances all my texture. Like the shade is weird. It makes me look orange when I pack it under my eyes, like orangey pink. Um, and then it just makes me look dry. Like I don't like the way my skin looks like with this. Every I've tried it twice now. Every time I've tried it, I'll do my face and I'm looking, you know, normal, fine, whatever. I put this on and I'm like, I hate my makeup and I have to wipe it all off and start over again. So I don't like this one. I don't know what it is. Maybe I should try the, the translucent. Uh, oil control one that's just a white powder but I still feel like I maybe maybe look dry so as much as I love Ofra and a lot of products this one is not it for me I am flying through this video it's more like this is what I didn't like and that's why I'm not one of those people who can like take five products and draw it out into a 45 minute video you know what I mean like I feel like I'm you know it's cool that people can do that but I just I just want to tell you what it is <laughs> So next product that I did not like, this has its own dedicated review video. Um, it didn't get that many views, so a lot of you might not have seen it, but the IT Cosmetics Bye Bye Dark Spots Concealer Plus Serum. I have two shades. And uh, first of all, the light, the shade chart, not light chart, the, the shade chart is incorrect. The one that's supposed to be lighter is darker than the ones that's supposed to be darker. The shades don't make sense. So you really have to see it in person in a store. Ordering online is no, because like this was supposed to be lighter and it's clearly darker than this one. Like it doesn't make any sense. So the shades are weird on their, sh their shade chart. And then secondly, it didn't do anything from under eyes. Like I feel like you could still see all my discoloration coming through. I thought the serum aspect of this concealer made it really easy to blend, which I did enjoy. Um, but I just didn't think it looked very good. And then the shades being wrong was like a really bad red flag for this for me because you should be able in this day and age to look at a shade online and know which one's lighter or darker at the bare minimum. They might not match you 100%, but you should know which ones are lighter or darker. I feel like one of those people right now waving these around that like guide airplanes. <laughs> um, but anyways, I just didn't like it. I didn't think it was enough coverage for me personally on like an everyday basis. I didn't think it was a nice lighter medium 
Um, but again, if you can't find the right shade for you, what is the point? And also, I don't understand the point of this little brush up here. I'm not going to sit here and use this all the time and clean it. It's just not going to happen. Next up, I did a video of this collection, and this was the one thing out of that collection that really flopped for me. So this is the Essence in collaboration with Disney's Lion King mas mascara thing. The waterproof mascara with Nala on it. Now, this was supposed to be a nice waterproof mascara, and I do love Essence's mascaras. I think for the price tag, like, you're not going to beat their quality, especially that green fall slash effect lash princess. The green one, you guys. I know some people have tried it, and they're like, oh, I didn't like the original blue one or the pink one or whatever. Get the green one. It's the best one. Ooh, you hear a little Kasha. She got congestion. Um, but anyways... So I know that sound is very distracting and not pleasant. However, that is the reality of working at home. Like these things happen. So anyways, let's continue talking about mascara because that threw me all off my train of thought. I don't think it is, it doesn't coat the lashes as much as like a regular waterproof mascara. It doesn't feel as thick. I will say it makes my lashes very long looking. I do like that, but I don't think they're very dark, very black. I also don't think it makes them like very full. It just makes them long and spidery. And I don't believe in the waterproof aspect of this just because it is a thin formula. So for me, this was like an eh product. I do like the length it gives me. But I don't really like waterproof mascaras in the first place. It doesn't have the same consistency as normal ones. And like I don't feel like I got volume. I just got spidery longness. Which if that's your vibe, that's cool. It's just not mine. Next up, I did a makeup look with this palette before. And I thought the look came out okay. But, like, it's not the most versatile palette in the world, and then the Icy White shade is not good. So, the Alice in Wonderland ColourPop palette. It's a really cute theme for a palette. I like the tiny little compact, uh, you know, palette size and everything. But for me, the theme of Alice in Wonderland has been done better. I love the Sigma one. The color scheme is so random. Like, you do have a couple pairings here where you can make a blue look with two shades. You can make the black and the Cheshire look. Um, you can make a green one. But for me, like this icy white shade, I'll go ahead and swatch it for you, is so, like it looks pretty red, but it's so crumbly and it, like impossible to work with. Like it wants to fade, that looks beautiful, but it wants to fade off of the lid. It feels gritty to the touch when you like blend it out, which is a little bit off-putting because I think there's like actual glitter pieces in here. It looks pretty for the swatch. It looks pretty when you first pick it up on your finger and everything. But blend it out it wants to disappear it doesn't want to stay on your lid even with an eyelid primer it doesn't really want to go on the lid and stay um so i kind of lose some of that pigmentation and then the gritty texture is not great and then also just overall like what am i going to do with this peachy shade in this palette i just don't think it's the most well put together thing i don't think it matches the movie very well as far as the color scheme if we're ignoring the cheshire color it looks like a lot of other color pop palettes um so eh for this one, you know, it's not like the most disappointing thing in the world, but when I heard Alice in Wonderland and ColourPop, I expected like punches of yellow and Cheshire colors and like brighter blues. This wasn't exactly what I was expecting. Also, I feel like that fits the theme of this video because it's not worst products I've ever tried, it's disappointing products, and that was disappointing to me. So next up, I just have an issue with shadow sticks, I think. Um, something about them, I don't know how people use them and love them and enjoy them. Now, if I was doing this look with a white one, I could probably scrub it right in there to get some of this white pigmentation there but overall for like gliding over my lid no so firstly let's talk about this urban decay one this is the color chaos and i was stoked for this i was like this is gonna be so beautiful they have these in Nordstrom rack right now in case you do like these and you want to get it but i thought this was a beautiful color i was like ooh, electric blue eye look i wanted to put this all over my lid and then go over it with a shadow on top just for a little bit of shimmer but it skips over the lid very like I don't know when i put it on the lid it looks nice at first but then the more i kept going over it it wants to like it wants to rub away i don't really know and then like it's just streaky the consistency is weird and then when i would put it on my lid and let it sit and go to another side like i do half of it in my inner corner here half of the inner corner here it would stick in certain spots more than others my hand is very oily right now so it does look okay um but it just it's uneven and look when I'm wiping it off of my hand it clings to certain parts more like the whole middle part went away it just it's inconsistent it sticks to certain parts up more than others and uh, I didn't enjoy it although I love this electric blue color so I wish I did like it um this is their eyeshadow stick this is just the name of it and then lastly, I do have another stick product. So this is something we got in a subscription box that I was excited for this olive green color. This is the Batter Up 
for girls who know how to play the field, outfield long wearing eyeshadow stick from the balm. This color looked cool, right? I just don't love it. Like it's very smooth and creamy and everything, but for the lid, again, it's it doesn't apply to the lid beautifully. This is a more oily stick than the Urban Decay one. This one's way more dry, this one's more oily. Um, so it does want to transfer. Like if you put it all over your eyelid and then you have a hooded crease or something or hooded lid, it wants to move. You definitely need to like do it with your eye like this and then set it with powder and then be able to move your eye by itself. So for me, it's not a one and done kind of eye product like you would expect an eyeshadow stick to be. You need to use it in conjunction with something. And then it's also way more like gray brown than green, isn't it? I mean, it's next to a blue shadow, so it's gonna look a little more green, but I didn't think the color was absolutely perfect. And it's not even shimmery, like I expected, but I mean, I just didn't love it and it's very transfery. But anyways, that is it for today's video, guys. A really short and sweet one today. I haven't tried anything that's like devastatingly bad recently. I think last time I talked about disappointing products, I mentioned like a rice protein hair thing. I haven't had any like really bad hair or skincare product reactions recently. So I'm glad on that one. But you know, now that I mention it, I feel like I have talked about these shadow sticks before. I don't know. I don't know, but I did try them again recently because I was thinking about decluttering and this weren't it. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'd appreciate it. Leave me a comment if you want to. That'd be cool. And you can check out my Etsy link down below if you feel like it. So thank you guys so much. Have a beautiful day and I'll see you later. Bye.